Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about how graduating Italy actually works. So that means all the processes that goes into the six years of medical school, whether it's the internships, the thesis, actually defending your thesis. And I even want to mention some of the classic like traditions around graduating here, which uh, I'll explain what these are and also what comes after graduation. So a part of me wanted to do this video, of course, because I wanted to flex about the fact that I just graduated, but mainly because I did not know what actually went into graduating here. Uh, most countries around the world, like most medical schools, they don't actually have to write a thesis. And also I get a lot of questions based around the official internship hours and how that basically works. Let's begin with a complete overview of the timeline. So first you start your first three years, which are kind of preclinical years. And this is when you get really the foundations of the science that will help build up the clinical sciences. Examples of this could be chemistry, helping you understand biochemistry, which will help you understand metabolic diseases and pharmacology, for example. Then starting in fourth year, this is when you start kind of moving into more like clinical years where for example how it works in sapienza is that you have applied pathology so in second year you do physiology and then in third year you do pathology and then in fourth year you do applied pathology and then kind of in sixth year when you start doing other subjects it's how you actually apply this information that you've been collecting into an actual like therapeutic clinical plan now if you've completed all of your fourth year subjects you start what is called the tpves or tpvs if you're you know in a hurry uh, internship. I'm going to expand on this a little bit later on, but essentially you have to have completed all of the exams from the first year of medical school to be able to start it. Fifth and sixth year is also when you need to kind of start considering writing your thesis because depending on what department you want to do that in they might have different requirements for for example maybe your average or how long they want you to actually go into the department an extremely picky professor might want you to be in there for at least one year before you're even allowed to be considered i guess for a thesis so let's say you've completed all your exams you finished your thesis you filed for graduation what comes next is actually defending your thesis. This means that you have to actually create a presentation on it and then you present it in front of everyone and you defend questions that might come from professors or whoever else is there from the com And if the evaluation goes well, yes, evaluation, because you're actually graded for it, you get to graduate, you get your diploma, you allegedly say the oath and then you get to celebrate. So let's now talk about all the different pieces of it, starting with the internship. To be able to start your TPVS internship, you need to have completed the first four years of exams. Not that you're in fifth year that you've completed the exams. And I specify this point because Italy has a very unique system in which you can progress through the years without having completed all of your exams. I've kind of made two videos that briefly touch on this and I would really recommend you watch both of them to get a better concept of it. But essentially, once you've completed all four years, you can then start TPVS. TPVS is made up of 300 hours in total over three months in three different fields. So that's 100 hours in a surgical field, 100 hours in an internal medicine field, and 100 hours in a medico di base, which is essentially like a family doctor or a GP. How it works is that you complete these hours in your fifth and sixth year, or if you're 40 corso later on, and what you do essentially is you fill out a booklet with what you do every day, and then it gets signed by someone at the very end. Now, in what department you do these rotations I think will massively depend from university to university because I know in Turin they have a booking system which I have heard a lot of criticisms about but I don't want to get into it in this video whereas in Sapienza we didn't even get a choice in the matter. For example for my surgical rotation I did it all in the vascular department for my internal medicine one I kind of rotated a little bit around to be fair uh, but mainly it was in diabetology diabetes 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 clinic the thyroid clinic and basically on the wards. You usually do your internship in small groups and then your medico di base or your family medicine rotation you do alone with one GP. If you enrolled before 2014, you are still allowed to do these internships after you graduate as that's how it worked back in the day. But now you have to complete them before you graduate to be able to graduate. They are only three months 
um, because I always get asked about a one-year possibility and this is not an option. And this might seem like a small amount, but keep in mind that these are the official hours. There are plenty of other ways to get much, much, much more practical experience by doing things called internatos or interatos. I can never remember what they're called and other things. I made a video on it if you want to go watch it. For the thesis, there are different types of thesis to begin with. You can have an experimental one where you basically do an original piece of research or the other type where you essentially uh, review, like you might do a meta-analysis or you might be, do a literature review. So there's different types of thesis you can do and this matters because you're graded on it. I'm not sure if every university has its own grading system. I would imagine that they do, but I would guess that all of them into some degree take into account the quality of the writing, how well you presented it, how knowledgeable you were about the topic when defending it. And I also know that, for example, in Sapienza, whether you do an experimental one or not also affects your final grade. Once you write your thesis, it needs to be printed out. Here's my one. Amazing. Uh, and uh, how it should look when you print it out and everything else depends on the style guides of the university. You essentially get to pick the cover of it, the texture of it, the paper weight, if it's going to be in color. You have a lot of customizable options, but usually your university will have a style guide on, you know, what fonts you can use, what are the title sizes, can you print on the backs of the pages, are they double spaced, etc. So every university has its own unique style guides that you have to follow when you're writing. Writing it. So about the minimum, it's very hard to gauge for what would be considered a minimum amount to write for the thesis. Mine was, mine was 71 pages, including the bibliography, and I would feel, I felt talking to people that I put in a lot more effort than usual into the thesis. I felt I was held to a higher standard, just saying. And my thesis supervisor absolutely dragged me for uh, how short of a thesis this was because I didn't technically write it with the medicine and surgery department. I wrote it with the cognitive neuroscience department, which I think belongs to psychology. Um, but yeah, the standards, how short it should be, how long it should be, etc., is going to completely depend on your university, the department and the thesis supervisor that you're writing it with. I wrote 71 pages. I felt like it was a decent amount. Um, I think that's considered short for like master's theses, but I saw a lot of my other friends' theses and I felt it was a quite a bit longer, but I don't know. So essentially how applying for the thesis works is that you find a department that you're interested in, you find a professor that you think you have a chance with, and you basically ask them if you can write their, your thesis with them. And then depending on the department and the professor, they might be stricter or more accepting of things like your grades, how many exams you've completed, uh, your interest, how long you've been going into the department. So it really, really highly depends. I think it's a really good idea to start considering it maybe in fifth-ish year because depending on what your post-graduation plans are, the thesis might be able to help you. For example, if your thesis is good enough to get published uh, and you're applying to a country that cares more about a CV style application, having a published thing in the department that you're trying to go into could be seen as a plus. For the day of the graduation, this is the part where I know as a fact it changes from university to university. So I'm going to speak just for Sapienza. How it works is we had to create a presentation, which again had style guides and length guides, etc. We had seven minutes to present our thesis. And essentially we presented this in front of the committee that is chosen by the university and is usually made up of the professors who were supervising uh, everyone's graduating theses. The people who are graduating that day and all of their families who are in the room and also some universities stream it online so that it's open to the public. I know, for example, in Catolica in Rome, you do the thesis events privately only in front of the committee and then you graduate the next day with all of your friends and family. You present the thesis and then you might get a question from the committee. Uh, as a formality, you should get at least one question. And of course, you need to be able to answer the question to be able to graduate. The committee then leaves the room, decides everyone's grades, everyone walks back in, you all stand in a line, they call your name, they declare you a doctor, they shake your hand, and you move on to the controversial part of the day of reading the Hippocratic Oath. Now, I don't want to get into this, but it's very controversial, so allegedly you say it or you don't. And that's it, you graduated. Uh, I want to especially talk about the, some of the traditions, which I think are really, really nice. In Italy, when you graduate, you don't wear like a cap and gown, which is super boring, but you wear, uh, oh my God, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, uh, Corona da Loro. And essentially it's a wreath that is made out of bay leaves. And it's kind of customized where like the ribbon that goes through it, 
each faculty has its own color that represents and medicine is traditionally red. And you can also get this customized with what you want in it. So if there are particular flowers that you like, like roses or lavender, or you can even get little chili peppers in it. Traditionally also, it's your friends who get the corona for you. But I guess if you don't have friends, your family could get it or you could just get it. I don't know. But uh, that's traditionally how it works. And then they put it on your head and then, you know, you celebrate, you pop Prosecco, not champagne. Champagne is from France, Prosecco is from Italy. They're very particular about that. You offer everyone a glass. You have to give a speech or a discorso, which is very embarrassing. And that's it, you're now graduated. You're officially a doctor. Now for the post-graduation part, when you graduate, you actually are not licensed to practice medicine. You just have a degree. What you need to do then next is to register with the Ordini degli Medici, which is essentially like a physician's association that you have to pay a licensing fee to because of course. And after you apply and pay for this, then you're actually allowed to practice medicine. Now, there are multiple graduation dates throughout the year, uh, depending on how on time or whatever you are with your exams and thesis. So it's not necessarily that you graduate in June. You can, but there are multiple, multiple dates. For example, I graduated in September and there were three, I think, sessions throughout June and July before we got to the September one. There's also an October, a November. I think there's even a January session. So that there are, so there are different sessions that you apply for to graduate essentially. And depending which session you graduate in, this can greatly impact what your plans after you graduate are. So for example, if you want to go to the UK after graduation, you basically have to graduate before July. I think since training starts in August, I think Rosh explained it a little bit better in when I interviewed him for the other video. Now, I'm really lucky that I basically got offered a job by Sapienza. I hope. I say I hope because it's not official yet and I just don't like getting my hopes up about things or ca counting my chickens before they hatch or whatever the phrase is. So usually if you graduate in September, this might limit a lot of the options that you've done. But thing other things that I were considering because I had been planning on graduating in September, I think for over 15 months. Um, is to take time off and work locum. Locum is essentially when you work as a replacement doctor. So for example, if in the emergency room, a resident is sick and they need a replacement for the day, they can call like an outside doctor. Uh, that would be working locum or you can do other things like working in the vaccination center giving vaccinations you can do ekgs to join the gym things like that so there are a lot of options uh, once you graduate that isn't necessarily starting uh, training and so my plan essentially was just to take a bunch of time off write a book uh, about studying medicine in italy and maybe work locum uh, to be able to eat and pay my bills and yeah, but I got offered a job. So there are a lot of options. Like you don't necessarily have to graduate in June to be able to like uh, do something. It's not like you're gonna sit empty for a year. I just wanted to point that out because there seems to be a, like a lot of fear over graduating late. So I just wanted to put you guys at ease. And yeah, that's it. That's how graduating works in Italy and the entire timeline.